Today we have an equation, negative 2 to the power x equals 2, and we need to find the value of x. Your brain is probably already trying to guess what x could be, right? And you might also be wondering, does a solution even exist? Is it any integer? Maybe in the rational numbers? Or perhaps somewhere in the irrational numbers? Or could it be hiding completely outside the real number system? Let's just draw a graph and test some numbers. I'll make a line at y equals 2. That's our target. Now let's see what happens when we plug in different x values. If x equals 0, negative 2 to the 0 power is 1, not 2. If x equals 1, negative 2 to the first power is negative 2, and nope, not 2. If x equals 2, negative 2 squared is 4, still not 2. I'm adding point after point to this graph, and none of them are hitting our target line at y equals 2. After testing tons of real numbers, positive, negative, fractions, you name it, we're still not getting anywhere close to 2. The yellow dots are scattered all over the place, but not a single one touches that blue line. This means we just proved there's no real number solution to this equation. So instead of thinking about this problem on the real line, why don't we change our perspective and look at it in the complex two-dimensional plane? And by the end of this video, we'll find x and plot the input x values in the two-dimensional complex plane and visualize the output in the complex three-dimensional plane. Okay, before jumping into the solution, let's understand this. In the complex plane, we can represent any number in polar form, which is r times e to the i theta. Here, r is the absolute value, the distance from the origin. In our case, it is 2. Theta, in our case, is pi, because negative 2 lies on the negative real axis, which makes an angle of pi from the positive real axis. The interesting part here is that there are actually infinite ways to get to the same spot. For negative 2, instead of just saying angle pi, we could say angle 3 pi. That's like going around once and then landing on negative 2. Or angle 5 pi, that's going around twice and landing on negative 2. In general, we can write negative 2 as 2 times e to the i times pi plus 2 pi n, where n is any integer. This gives us all the equivalent representations of the same complex number. So we'll move forward to the solution while keeping this in mind. Now taking the natural logarithm of both sides helps us work with the exponent. Using the logarithm property, this becomes x times the natural log of negative 2 equals the natural log of 2. The natural log for negative numbers is undefined in the real number system, but in the complex system, it can be defined and becomes a multi-valued function. For any complex number z, the natural log of z equals the natural log of its magnitude plus i times its argument. For negative 2, that distance is 2, and we figured out that the angle is pi plus 2 pi n. Now I can substitute this back into our equation. To solve for x, I divide both sides by that whole expression. So, x equals the natural log of 2 divided by the natural log of 2 plus i times pi plus 2 pi n. To separate this into real and imaginary parts, I'll multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. After expanding and simplifying, we get x equals the natural log of 2 squared divided by the quantity natural log of 2 squared plus pi plus 2 pi n squared minus i times the natural log of 2 pi plus 2 pi n, all divided by the same denominator. And of course, n is any integer. This means we have infinitely many solutions for this equation. Now understand this. To plot a complex function with both inputs and outputs, we would need a four-dimensional system, which is not easy to visualize. So instead, we plot the input in the two-dimensional complex plane and visualize the output in a different plane. So here we are plotting some of these solutions on the complex plane by taking different values of n. Each value of n gives us a unique complex solution to our original equation. On the right-hand side, we have a three-dimensional view. It's not exactly the corresponding output for this input, but it shows how the visualization of this equation looks. The red spiral 
shows the path traced by negative 2 to the power of complex number x. The vertical green line marks where the output equals 2 on the real axis. And that yellow dot? That's exactly where our spiral intersects the target value of 2. This spiral winds its way through three-dimensional space, and every time it crosses that green line, we have another solution to our equation. This same pattern works for any positive number. If we change our equation to negative 3 to the power x equals 3, or negative 4 to the power x equals 4, we get the same type of solution, just with different numbers. I hope this video helped you understand the concept. If you have any questions, please mention them in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe.